Hi, I'm Matthew Coast, head dating coach and founder at CommitmentConnection.com. And in today's video, we're going to ask the question, will you be single forever? Here's how to know. And so I'm going to give you five questions to ask yourself that will determine whether you're going to be single forever. If this is your first time to our channel, make sure you go and hit the subscribe button to get more videos on how to have the relationship that you've always wanted. So let's get started. If you're frustrated with being single and you're not sure if maybe you're just going to be single forever, let's ask a few questions. The first question is, are you meeting new people? So uh, in today's day and age with the internet and online dating, um, it's really easy to kind of get stuck in your home and never really leave and meet new people. Go from job to home to job to home, <laughs> maybe out and not really uh, want to meet guys that are out there. So are you regularly meeting new people? Um, if you kind of take a look at it and you're like, okay, well, how many uh, new people would I have to meet in order to meet a guy that I like? I mean, if you looked at all the guys out there and you're like, um, you know, how many, uh, what percentage of the guys that are out there um, would I even be attracted to or could even potentially be somebody that could be in my life? Um, I, I think that you'd realize that it's probably pretty small. So if you're not actually meeting guys, that could be a huge problem for you. Question number two, are you waiting for a good man or are you looking for Mr. Perfect? So uh, one of the things that runs up with both men and women is that they kind of have this idealization about the person that they want to be with. And so uh, for a lot of them, what will end up happening is uh, if, if you're kind of stuck on this Mr. Perfect showing up in your life and you want him to be, you know, this giant long list of this and that and this and that and this and that, um, you might end up running into a problem where, you know, maybe that guy doesn't even really exist. And certainly the men that you meet, guys who might be really great for you, uh, might not fit into that category of this Mr. Perfect guy. So, um, Instead of looking for Mr. Perfect, um, you might want to find a guy that's just really great. Number three, are you disqualifying men because of their character flaws or just because um, they're unfamiliar and they're, you're not really sure yet? First off, I want to say that it's very important to disqualify guys that show red flags. Right? If, if a guy shows some obvious red flags of some kind of problem, um, that's a great time to disqualify him. But one of the things that I see with a lot of women out there is that they'll just uh, they'll disqualify guys for all kinds of stupid things that um, don't really make any sense. And, and you know I think part of what is to blame here is also online dating um, because, a lot of online dating, they set things up so that you search for people or accept and reject people based on things that have no real indication of whether you guys are going to be good for each other or not. So the question is, have you automatically been rejecting guys because of superficial things? You know, chemistry doesn't always just hit you like that. I know that there's kind of this fantasy out there where it's like you meet this guy and it's love at first sight and you know that he's perfect for you and he comes and sweeps you off his off your feet. And, um, you know, w w what I think uh, happens more often is that a lot of times uh, a woman can be surprised by the chemistry or surprised by how much they really like a guy that initially they didn't really think uh, they're going to like. And that's one of the reasons, one of the big uh, situations that a lot of women come to me with is they end up in these casual friend with benefits relationships where they now want a guy to commit to them. And the reason that that ends up happening is because they disqualify this guy early on because he's not perfect. And then they end up catching feelings and they go, oh, um, yeah, I actually do like this guy now, and now I'm starting to see his amazing qualities, and now I'm starting to fall in love with him, and you know, <laughs> and so how do I get him to commit now? And so 
um, you know, I, I don't want you to be in that situation because it's harder than uh, getting into a situation where you learn about a guy initially, don't get into the sexual relationship, and then um, end up uh, deciding that he's right for you later on. Um, it, it, it's better to uh, connect with him and learn about him before sleeping with him because if you uh, connect with him after you sleep with him, um, it, he might not be in the right space. Question number four. Are you still stuck on an ex or maybe something that happened in your past? I, I see this all the time. Uh, one of the a big problem that you might run into if you're still kind of emotionally connected to your ex or maybe some kind of situation that happens in your past is that you'll end up going into a new relationship and you will um, just screw things up with a guy or maybe you'll go into a new dating situation and you'll really uh, push the guy away because of how much you're either talking about your ex or some kind of negative emotional experience from your past. And so if you really want to attract a man, you have to, you have to do the work there. there. There's work that needs to be done where you have to forgive and you have to let go and you have to heal and move on in order for you to really be open to a new relationship. And sometimes this happens subconsciously where you don't even realize you're not really in a space to connect with a guy. Question number five. Are you letting a man invest in you? So one of the big things that I talk about in some of my videos and programs is that in order for a guy to want to stay with you and commit to you, he has to feel invested in you. And I'm not just talking about monetary investment, although that can help. But there's also um, a physical investment. There's also an emotional investment. There's a time investment. So there, there's a whole bunch of t different types of ways that a man will invest in you. And you have to let him do that before you jump on him, right? And so this is actually the thing behind the chase. When a guy chases you, um, he starts creating those investments, or I, I like to call it pursuing. If you let a man chase you, um, he'll start to invest in you, and there's a much higher probability that he'll end up getting to a space where he feels like you're the type of person that he wants to be in a relationship with, who he wants to take off the market, and who he wants to uh, commit to for a long-term, lasting type relationship. Thanks for watching this video. If you're ready to know exactly what to say and do to attract the man and the relationship you've always wanted, click on the button on the right hand side of this video and go to our website.